a client that I was working with, whenever he needed to add a three compartment sink to his floor plan, he had to rotate it to align it with the specific wall, explode his sink. So that way he stretched his sink like so, and say stretch from, and that way he could quickly stretch his sink, for instance, a 70 inch sink, and then he will move all of his balls to the center of his sink so that way he could finish his sink like so. You can see all of the travel that my client had placing his sinks in this way. I'm going to show you today how I was able to help my client creating a useful dynamic block. So let me then go ahead and undo everything that I just did with control Z and let me move it to the side so we can start creating this awesome dynamic block. So the first thing I did was of course rotated this block and I proceeded to explode this sink of course because I wanted to start from scratch. So one of the first things I did was select all of the items and went under my property palette to see that there were on layer zero and the color by layer, the line type of course by layer also. This would be to avoid any future problems. The next thing I did was ask one question to my client and the question was what was the most used three compartment sink size that he usually used? This is an important question because that's the size that I needed to start with and he answered seven feet six or 90 inches so that's why i stretched this three compartment sink from this point and set from all the way from here was 90 inches and then i proceeded to move my three center bolts and place it exactly on the middle of my sink like so this is the most used block from my client and this way i could go ahead and make this into a static block first using the block command. I proceeded to rename my block the lazy 3 com sync <laughs> and then of course I checked the open in block editor so that way I could go ahead and select my base point. Now the base point needed to be very strategic. I could go select my base point on any of these corners but that would be problematic so what i did is i placed my base point in the center of my block like so once i did that i was now on the block editor and here is where i started adding some actions and parameters so the first thing that my client was struggling with is as you previously saw on the demonstration stretching or increasing the size of his block so in order to help with that I proceeded to add a linear parameter using my block authoring palette over here. So I started in the linear parameter and following the instructions that says specify a star point. I went ahead and did that. My endpoint would be over here, like so. So once I did that, I saw this exclamation a yellow mark. That simply means that this parameter needs an action in order to perform or to work. First though, I selected my linear parameter and changed the property of the number of grips because now it was two and I needed only one. So that's what I did. I changed it to one. So you can see immediately the change. Now I only have one grip. So then what I proceeded to do was add a action and this action was the stretch action. So following the instructions on the command line, I needed to select my parameter and then select my associated point, which was over here. Then I needed to specify the stretch frame and the stretch frame would be this and the objects would be the following like so so once i pressed enter i needed to test this block because that's a way for me to see if there are any problems before i proceed adding the next parameters or actions so that's what i did when and test the block from the ribbon 
and this way I went ahead and test my block really quick so if I stretch it it was working nicely however we had a problem well at this stage I had many problems one was of course the the grip for my base point wasn't moving accordingly as well as my balls weren't moving accordingly so a way that I solved this was I'll go ahead and add another action in this case the move action so once I started that I selected my parameter of course which one this one and then the associated point which was of course over here finally I selected my objects in this case were my three central poles so once I did that I went ahead and test my block and what I noticed was that when I stretch now indeed my balls are moving or stretching but not in the way that I would like which was keeping it centered so again that's another problem but the way I solve it was selecting the move action and then go to my property palette and there was an option here called distance multiplier and it was set to one that means that it's um, moving or stretching one but i wanted to do it only 0.5 or halfway so that way when i test my block or my balls will follow and will keep center with my block so now we solved this first issue however i noticed that we had another issue which was that my base point for my block this is the base point where I can grab my block and place it wasn't keeping center with my sink so in order to solve that what I did was I introduced a parameter in this case the base point parameter so the base point parameter following the instructions I needed to set a location and of course would be here on the center of the sink like so now the base point parameter or didn't give me any exclamation yellow marks as you saw so I thought it would be fine so I tested the block but when I tested it you can see that still the base point is not working as expected <laughs> what I did is now I needed to add the base point to my move action so the way I did it was selecting my move action click on it and say modify selection set once I did that and following the instructions of course that says add I added the base point by selecting it and then pressing enter and now once I tested my block I saw that my block was working nicely now the balls as well as the base point were moving accordingly with my block and once I solved this issue I went ahead and added the next linear parameter because this would be for the length and I needed another linear parameter for the width of my sink so I proceeded to use the same steps adding a linear parameter going ahead like so and simply clicking over here like so so really quick I pr did the same steps of removing one grip adding a action in this case the stretch action as we previously did I selected my parameter selected my associated point I created my frame for stretch and finally I selected my objects including my ball over here like so and press enter so before I proceeded to keep adding and adding parameters and actions again I tested my block just to be sure that everything is working correctly with the new added stretch action and I saw another problem <laughs> so the problem as you can see is that even though the stretch action is working the center of my balls are not moving accordingly are not keeping center with the sink width so 
In order to solve that, what I did was I added it a new action. In this case was the stretch action. So once I followed the instructions, I selected my parameter, in this case, this parameter over here, and then the associated point would be this one. And then finally, the corner of a stretch. So I needed to be very strategic for the corner of a stretch because I only needed to move or stretch this central part for the bolt. So I went ahead and select this part as well as this other part. So that way my central bolt will only move this part. And then finally I selected it only the central part like so. So I went ahead and tested the block to see that if indeed it fixed the problem or not, I noticed that what's happening is that it's moving the central piece, but it's not keeping it central on the ball. So in order to fix that, what I did is I went ahead and closed the block editor and I proceeded to select my stretch, which was this one over here, as you can see. And then I went to my property and changed the distance multiplier again to 0.5. Let me select it again. So it's this stretch. Once you select an action, you can see like a highlighted preview of it. So you know which one is the action. So I went ahead and changed it to 0.5 like so and tested it. So I'm going to stretch this and it kind of fixed the problem. Now the central piece is keeping central with the width. However, we're having another problem right now, which is that these lines, of course, are not keeping in the same location as our ball. So let's see how we can fix that. The problem was because when we selected our objects for this stretch, for the middle part stretch, we shouldn't have to select those lines. We only needed to select the circle or the central part. So in order to fix this, what I did was click on my stretch action and went and said modify selection set. So once I did that, I needed to again specify my stretch frame, but I already had a stretch frame. So I simply pressed enter to accept that stretch frame. And then I made sure that the remove option was selected. So that way I could go ahead and select these lines that were causing problems and only leave selected the following part. Once I did that and press enter and tested my block to see if there weren't any problems with this, indeed the block looked good. There wasn't any weird moving parts or anything. And so far we were ready to go. So the next thing that happens with this block was that we couldn't just give this three compartment sync to the client like that, because as you saw, this will give random sizes and syncs don't work like that. Syncs come in standard sizes. The way I solved this issue of random sizes was I did some research and found some standard sizes for this three compartment sync. I found the following information. And of course, this would be for the L1 would be the length. And of course, a W1 would be the width. And if we go ahead over here, we can see that we have some a standard length as well as some standard width for our three compartment sinks. Using this chart, I proceeded to set some standard sizes for this thing. And the way I did it was first changing the name of my parameter over here on the property. This would be not distance one, but would be length. And this would be not distance two, but would be width. So for the length, I started adding some standard sizes by going to my property palette and set the distance type to list. Once I did that, I had an option to start adding values over here and following, of course, our chart over here. I start adding 120 inches, 
98 inches, 76, 90 inches, which was 7 feet 6, so we don't need that, 74, and finally 58 inches. So once I had all of my options, I clicked OK, and then when I went ahead and test my block, I saw that indeed I was only able to stretch to those certain standard sizes, which was a way to control this stretching. And you can see that the smaller three compartment sink fits perfectly. So I needed to do the same steps for the width of my sink. You never want to give a something like this. So I went ahead to my property, changed the distance to list, and following my chart, I saw that for the width, there would be 30 inches and 24 inches only. So I proceeded to go and the 24, so 30 inches is the 2 feet 6. So and then I proceeded to click OK. Now, another thing that I asked my client about this block was if he find himself constantly looking at the block properties to check its size and the answer was yes so i wanted to make his life easier and in order to do that i added a size label to the sink so he will know immediately its size and the way i did it was utilizing the dli shortcut i added a dimension to this sink block from here all the way up here like so and for the width also we're gonna we needed a dimension so that's what i did and went ahead and selected my dimension like so now another question that came out during our meeting was do you want this size label in feet and inches or only in inches and he said that when he surveyed a building he will 100 percent put the sizes of any equipment in inches so knowing that i went ahead and select one of these dimensions and on the property palette what i did to change some of its properties for instance in order to change the feet and inches to only inches i went to the primary units and selected from architectural to decimals once i did that i needed to change the precision also and finally i needed to add a suffix a dim suffix of the inches character like so and that way i had these 90 inches sink compartment like so now i didn't need all of these dimension parts over here the arrow the dim line and so on so i started to turn those off over here under the lines and arrows so i start turning off and some of these items that were not needed i only needed a label so the arrow arrows were off now i needed to also turn off the dim line one and two as well as the extension line so i turn those off and that way i will only see my label like so so once i did that of course i match properties to my other dimension so i don't have to do it again so i proceeded to match properties and that way i will only see a label over here another thing that i did was test my blog to see how it was behaving so i saw that whenever i stretch this my label or size for my sink wouldn't update and this was because we needed to do an extra step so the step that we needed was to add these new dimensions to our stretch actions so that's what i did i selected my stretch and click and set modify selection set when it asked me for the corner of stretch it was the same corner so i simply pressed enter and then i proceeded to select the add option and of course select my dimension and press enter i did the same step for this other dimension i selected my stretch action modify 
press enter to accept that and then select my new dimension like so so once i tested the block to see that everything was working indeed it was working nicely my size label was updating as well as the width also and this was a convenient way for my client to immediately know the size of the three compartment sink however he didn't want this to show when he print his four plans and the way to make this happen was going ahead and put these dimensions on the death point layer so that way they won't print on any of his plans so the next thing that happened was that whenever my client needed to place his sink he will have to manually go ahead and rotate it to align it with the wall and i didn't want that so how i solved this issue was implementing a new parameter in this case the alignment parameter so once i selected that following the instructions as specify base point and my base point had to be the same as my block so i go ahead and place it like so and then of course i had to test it so the way i did it was drawing a huge rectangle and going ahead and test my block and it was again working nicely it was aligning now with a wall the problem i saw was whenever i stretch or change sizes of my sink my new parameter wouldn't align with my central base point and that's not what we want we want always consistency so the way how i kept my alignment parameter on the middle of my block was simply adding this new item to our move action so i did a click and said modify selection set and then i proceeded to add this alignment grip as well as this alignment over here so once i did that and tested my block i saw that it was working nicely it was now moving accordingly to keep center so after i did all of these steps it was time for me to do a final test of this block and the way i did it was close the block editor and of course click save the changes and so once i did that and i could of course add this to test it to my tool palette over here i could go ahead and drag it to my tool palette so the next time that my client needed to place a sink he could simply go to his floor plan and select the sink and go ahead and place it exactly where he needed not only that but if he need a different size he could simply pick the size that he need or simply type it for instance 76 inches like so the same for the width he could have a smaller or a bigger sink and this way he had this sink ready to go